I just want to pose this question to all of you guys. For all of you who are designers or animators, you're a creator. What experiences are you designing for today? What screens, what, you know, what mediums are you designing for today? Because I think the nature of this discussion and the new technology that's coming out, it's really going to open up where we go as designers and creators. So there's, there's a lot for us to be uh, designing for in the future. So I want to pose that question out there. Just think about that. Put it in the chat below. Like what space do you work in? What experiences are you working in? And are you in any experimental spaces? So let's recap the news real quick. So last week we had Oculus Connect 5 and that was their yearly annual uh, conference and this was the fifth year that they're celebrating since their acquisition from Facebook which was a 2.3 uh, billion dollar acquisition. Oculus for those of you guys who don't know it's a VR headset. Um, their, go their first uh, product to market was the Oculus Rift. Uh, last year they released the Oculus Go and then this year they had some interesting announcements. So Oculus, the reason why it was acquired by Facebook is because they had some interesting technology, some uh, forward-facing technology bringing VR to the people. And if we go to my slides, um, there's this little shot of uh, Mark Zuckerberg saying, you know, we're continuing our mission to bring VR to the masses, one billion people. And here is where we're at in that mission. They are 1% complete on this journey. People in VR, it's only 1%. And it was pretty funny because, you know, that's something that they've always been criticized for. VR hasn't taken off the way that it has. And, uh, you know, he just owned that. So now that that's out of the way, they could just talk about all their interesting technology. So let's go back to my slides. So what Mark Zuckerberg was saying that there's a couple of things in order to get past that threshold of mass adoption, there's a couple things that need to happen. They need to develop an ecosystem where you get, I believe it was 100 million people on. I could be wrong, or 10 million people on, I'm sorry. And you have to develop a form factor, something that's not going to be limited in terms of power of hardware and so on and so forth. So they have the answer to that, which is the Oculus Quest. This is uh, a hands-free wireless uh, device now, which is supposedly as powerful as the Rift, but we haven't seen any specs on that, so it's not confirmed. <clears throat> so Mark Zuckerberg said, this is the all-in-one VR experience we have been waiting for because you don't need a computer anymore. You don't need any wires. You don't need any sensors. Everything is built into the headset, and it's aware of where you are and what you're doing, and it can read all the accesses like the uh, Oculus Rift does. So here's a couple of bullet points. I know it's a lot, but you could use this anywhere. It's as powerful as the Rift, supposedly. Uh, it's a hand interaction, right? So you could use their little controllers. Six degrees access, so you can move up, down, left, right, back, forward. It's going to be $399 at launch, which is the same price as the, the sale price for the Rift right now. And they're going to launch with 50 titles available on there. So... And Matthew, just to yep. be clear here, I know that they came out with the Oculus Go, uh, what was it about, in May of this year, so there yes. are some differences there? Yeah, so there's three tiers, and this is what they're saying, and this is just a completion of their first generation lineup. So Rift was their powerful all-in-one, uh, sorry, their, their tethered uh, virtual reality experience, which is their first product. Then earlier this year, which they announced last year, was Oculus Go, which is completely wireless as well, but it's a lot less powerful. I don't think it has the same level of interaction and it was at a much lower price point. That was just their way of really getting it out to the masses. Right. I think it was like $200. Right. Very, very cheap. And then Oculus Quest is somewhere in between. Now it's completely wireless, all in one, and supposedly as powerful as the Rift. So what does that really mean? What does that look like? <laughs> well, there is this really cool uh, demo that they had released, I believe, a day before. It's Mark Zuckerberg and his CTO. And there is in this fake kind of, it's like a warehouse, but it's mocked up to look like a living room. And what they're doing is they're playing a tennis VR experience. So they're going back and forth. They're running around on this mini court and they're hitting a tennis ball back and forth, which is super interesting because look, no wires. Now they're in this um, space where they can move around, and I, I think there's some interesting stuff there. Here's another experience. This is a demo that they had set up for <clears throat> people who attended <laughs> Oculus 5, uh, Connect 5. 
which is the Oculus Quest Arena. So basically, this is just a shootout. It's like a Western shootout, but you can see there's a physical space that this is tracking on. So everybody that has the headsets on, they can run around this physical space. They are the avatar that we see in the bottom right, which is just a screen that's showing us exactly what they're seeing. And each of these people are running around, like hiding behind stuff, shooting, reloading, and trying to, to shoot each other. So it's very interesting what this technology does because all of a sudden now that you're not tethered all kinds of things can happen and this isn't new i mean this is something that's been around for a little bit and maybe some of you guys are familiar with this there's this uh, experience that's localized at a couple of uh, places i think there's one here in glendale it's it's by the void and it's called star wars secrets of the empire and the idea is that you and your friends put on these vr headsets and haptic suits so that you could fe and you're carrying a gun and you're a part of the rebellion running through this little space that we see here on the right side. Everything you can touch physically. So you're running through this maze and kind of running around in this small space. But you run around in circles, but it feels like you're doing this full journey. And, you know, when you're in the space, this is a little dark, but when you put on the headset, all of a sudden you are a, a rebel who's dressed up as a uh, stormtrooper who's trying to infiltrate this space. And you have a very specific mission. So... Again, this, this experience has been out for, I think, a little over a year now, maybe two years. But it's just an example of what t um, wireless VR experience can look like and feel like. It, it's, it's really interesting. That's pretty cool because traditionally with a lot of the original VR sets that came out, you have to stay in one place, right? Yes. And I've used some of these things, but now the ability to go walk off into your physical environment really changes the game. Right walk off and stub your toe into your, uh, <laughs> into your coffee table. But I, I think the big question really is, now that we know all of this, this is the $2.3 billion question. Will you pick one up? Hmm. So what about you guys? Would you Good pick question. this up now that it's all in one, no wires? Are you going to pick this thing up? I personally might wait. Mm -hmm. um, I think development is getting there, but I think I spent too much money on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Real facts. What about you, uh, Frank? Um, you know, I'm going to agree. I think I'm going to wait. I think first gen, it's like any Apple thing is going to have like some sort of like problems and I'm going to wait till the second gen is going to be better <laughs> and I'm going to like that one better. So I'm just going to wait. Man. Plus, I have like four or five VR headsets here. Yeah. <laughs> one more. Well, you, you work on VR and you, you know, you're already yeah, I have part like of the every ecosystem. VR headset already, so okay. I don't know if I need another one to be honest. <laughs> but it is different. It's wireless. Yeah, well, it's well, wireless, yeah. Well, what about our audience? Are they saying anything? Is this something that excites them or they're just like, meh? Someone said, heck yes. Yeah. Let's see. Some people say that VR zones will need to be a thing. Not sure if they're going to hop into different environments. People are commenting on Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you yeah, go. and that's AR. So that's that's yeah. what we'll get into just a little bit. But I'm just curious just because VR, you know, there's been this big promise. I was listening to a podcast recently. I think it was on the startup. And they were interviewing this woman who is has a startup. She was getting funding. And it, essentially it was the Giphy or Jiffy for VR and AR content. Mm. So she was developing that platform because she saw this big rise and she actually got her funding on there. But it's just interesting that it's, we're starting to get through this critical point, I believe, in the space of VR and AR adoption. I know it's been a really long one and everybody's been saying, you know, next year, next year, next mm -hmm. year. But I think mm -hmm. we're at an interesting point now that there is this technology that has the promise to be very powerful and create experiences that are not tethered to a high powered PC. Yeah. And, and just to be clear to people out there, I mean, we hear the terms VR, AR, and then, you know, Frank, you're pretty immersed yeah. in this. Um, <laughs> can we get a little clarity? As to, sure. Yeah. Um, I think the VR, AR goes on the same, it's on, on the same spectrum, usually, that we prefer to call on the same spectrum because they're all immersive interactive media. But for VR, it's more of a fully immersed environment. So you're placed in an environment where it's completely different. There's no reality. You're kind of encased in this, like, sphere, right? And you're mm -hmm. kind of uh, being immersed there. And AR is more of a digital layer on top of the real world. So, so you, can you still, see the real world. Right. You can still see the real world in front of you. You can still interact. So you're not like, you know, getting hit by cars or anything. But <laughs> <laughs> but there's a digital world on top of it's augmented that can make your life better in a lot of ways. Right. Like Pokemon Go. Like Pokemon Go. Because exactly. that enriched our lives exactly. so much. <laughs> See, I get to walk now with Pokemon Go. I can exercise. <laughs> I wasted a lot of hours on that thing and it was pretty fun. Yeah. Well, it lasted. <laughs> 
All right, let's let's move on to the next thing because I think I want to add that extra layer of detail on this conversation. So last week, um, I got my iPhone, and I know a couple people here in the office. Mark, you got your iPhone? Yep, fanboy. <laughs> right, yeah, and uh, I mean they had their conference earlier in September, yeah. and basically it was the same news: bigger screens, more power. It's like nothing new. Bigger, right? better, better. Yeah, pretty much. And I know what a lot of you guys are thinking out there: just like, yeah, it's crap. <laughs> It's crap, <laughs> especially anybody who's Android. Like, you'll just find any reason to to, to poo poo on it, <laughs> and that's totally fine. That's okay. I, we're not here to discuss the hardware. You know, that's I I don't really care. You know, it's, I'm in the ecosystem. I'm sure Mark, you've been in the ecosystem. It's just hard to get out of the habit. So I'm not here to debate what's better or what's what's worse. What I'm really here to talk about is something else that they announced at their conference which was AR Kit 2. Their, two. Their, their kit for augmented reality, and they demoed some very interesting things. So when they demoed it on the stage, here are a couple of the key things that have been updated with their AR Kit 2 multiplayer. So now people with multiple devices can be seeing and experiencing the same thing. They could be interacting with the same thing. So for this little photo here on the left side, what it was is a partnership with Lego, where they had this little Lego set, and then two people were looking at it from different angles and they were interacting with it at the same time. So this AR Kit 2 was able to recognize the Lego model and then add animation, characters, more buildings around this thing. And these two people were able to, uh, were able to interact with it. So I think this opens up a ton of possibilities. Second thing is persistent AR. What does that mean? Persistent AR means if, let's say if you're working on a puzzle and uh, you know what, I gotta go, I gotta go check on the kettle because it's whistling now. I go over there and then I come back, my puzzle is still gonna be there. So the, the idea of persistent AR is like you could work on something or be mm-hmm. playing something and once you turn off the experience, it'll still be there when you come back. So that, again, opens up some very interesting possibilities in terms of now you have multiplayer, now you have this persistent AR. What happens if you're in a space, you alter something, you leave, and then somebody else comes in? There's a lot of possibilities here, right? Uh, Another thing that they're releasing, I believe this is just an app, it's called Measure, but the idea is that it will get world scale for you. So world scale is very important. So, for instance, there's some apps that we'll be looking at out there where scale is important. So they have a couple of these apps where you're putting furniture in your space. But if you don't know the world scale of your space, the couch could be very tiny or huge, right? And it's like, this doesn't help me at all. But the fact that you could uh, send send a point of measurement there and it knows like this is 10 feet in the AR app and this is 10 feet in the real world, now we'll map things very accurately to your space. So that's pretty huge. And the last thing, this was uh, a thing that they worked on with Pixar, a universal file format, USDZ format. And this is game changing because, you know, a lot of this uh, AR stuff is just porting over, you know, developers and, you know, 3D artists and putting them in the same space. And we didn't really have universal file formats. And there's all kinds of problems when you're transferring 3D data over to an AR app. All kinds of problems. I was actually working on something with Frank and some of the designers here last year, and it was a nightmare to work in the AR space because everything is, it just hasn't gotten to that level of maturity. But now there's this fantastic format. And then, I don't know, Frank, if you want to add a layer to that in terms of the format, because you're way more in this than I am. Yeah, I mean, I think the format brings is a very good opportunity for a lot of these creators to kind of work together. I mean, before even 3D, um, having three different formats like, uh, you know, OBJ, FBX, all that was a big problem for us because it mm-hmm. transferred over. But then when Olympic came out, it was a universal form for 3D. I think this is the right step towards the right direction. I think, you know, um, Apple is thinking in the right part of like helping creators come together and make better content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, along with that, do you think it's uh, they're making it easier for developers they have to, to develop? I they mean, have like, to. I think in the past people were like, "Hey, this is uh, you know too technical." Exactly. I think Apple um, and the people in the AR space realize that ease, ease, and um, convenience must be number one because mm-hmm. in order for people to really um, get on and kind of like uh, want to put content on here, they have to be easy. If it's not, people just go away and do other stuff, right? Right. Yeah, so they have to. 
Right. And just to give a little bit of color, um, there was a project that we were working on, and you know none of the previous file formats were working. So we would animate something in Cinema 4D, which would have all these cool textures and animation, and then we would port it over to our AR application, and then something would get left behind, right. like the animation's broken or the texture's broken. And no matter what, all these different iterations, it was just a nightmare to put together. So now that we have this easy uh, all-in-one format that's universal, I haven't used it yet, but I'm hoping that this alleviates all of those challenges. So let's talk about some of the applications because I think this is really important just for you guys to see because I think the obvious thing is gaming, right? A lot of people see this as like, oh, cool, Pokemon Go, this Lego AR city, this is super cool, right? So your little kid, you know, you could buy him a 3D uh, <clears throat> or adult. You could buy him, a, <laughs> you buy him a, a Lego set. You know, I'd love to have a Mostly Millennium adult, Falcon yeah. one one day. But you, know, you could buy him a set, and you could see here in this example, um, he's interacting with it. And even though he has a small like little building that he's built out, everything around it is augmented, right? So you have all these little characters, these dogs, these trees that animate out, and he can pick up and move around. And he can do this with other people. So that's the gaming version of this. Here's a very practical example. This is Chalk. And the idea behind this app is, uh, let's say you have an Airbnb or renting out your place and somebody is staying and they want to make a coffee but they don't know how to use your freaking espresso machine because there's so many <laughs> buttons on there so what they could do is they could open chalk they can have a live video feed of whatever they're looking at and then the owner who's let's say on the other side of the world he could draw on top of that video that live video and he could say well, okay first step one you know you insert your pod here step two press this button wait for it to heat up five minutes and then step three just push this button and don't forget to clean out this tray so he can draw right on top of this and that's fantastic because it's uh it's a very practical use another practical use we talked about this earlier ikea released their own app and i think it's maybe already a year old on ar kit one but it's getting some updates this is ikea place that's so cool they have their entire catalog on this ar app and now you don't even have to go to the store yet. You don't have to take crazy measurements. You just look around your room and say, you know what? I want to buy this, this uh, mom bed from uh, Ikea. I want to put this lamp. I don't know any of the names. They're all kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and then like, I'm going to put this bookshelf here. So what you could do is you could decorate your room. You can get a good ex feeling and example of what that might look like before you even commit going out to Ikea and then buying all that stuff and tr pulling it back. Because the worst thing people know is buying furniture, only realizing that it doesn't fit or it doesn't look right. Right. So this is a very practical use. So this is a good range of, of different types of applications from gaming to like everyday practical use to uh, something like this, which is product base. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm. Something's going on in Santa Monica. <laughs> oh, <yes. coughs> They're almost gone. All right, so now kind of looping back, makers, what does this mean to you? Like, I mean, I, I feel like as designers, a lot of the people on this channel, we are focused so much on, on creating for web design, for brochures, for all kinds of graphic experiences. But what does this really mean for you now that we open up this VR and AR world and all of these countless, countless of experiences that have not been designed yet what does this mean for you it means that you could take your skills and transfer it over to this brand new space yeah you know what it's getting pretty flooded it's getting pretty saturated in the market with things like fiverr and upwork where it's just like a race to the bottom in terms of charging for the skills that somebody else in a developing con country can charge 10 percent of what you charge well stop playing in the kiddie pool Let's go swim in the ocean because there's a big ocean that needs to be discovered right now. And to help us talk about this, we brought on Frank Shi, who obviously Hi. I gave a mini introduction <laughs> earlier. I think some people might not have heard his introduction because I think we're having some mic issues. That's cool. Uh, I'll do it again. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's, it's all good. So, yeah. so Frank Shi, he is the co-founder of Paper Triangles. And you guys have been out for what now? Four years? I'll say three. Three yeah. years. Okay. Three years. And they work in the AR and VR space. But That's you know, us. Originally, your background was in animation, 3D yeah. animation. You were an intern with us and <laughs> we worked together back in 2012. Oh, yeah. That was, I, was, I just saw the sweet and low spot we did in the hallway. It was such memory. <laughs> <laughs> and you come a long way. Yeah, you come yeah, a long yeah. way. And Frank is also an official Snap Lens creator, and we'll get into that. So, 
Let's look at some of Frank's work because he has made this transition from being a designer, a 3D animator over into this uh, immersive space, which is AR and VR. Right. So talk us through what are we looking at here on this example here? Yeah, so this was a concept we did for one of our clients um, early on, Daiquiri. They are an augmented reality hardware company. Um, early on, they had two branches, one for um, automotive design, one for their hard helm, which is kind of like their um, AR glasses, right? But this is their automotive division. And what we're doing is how does augmented reality help your um, everyday driving experience? As you, everyone experienced, there's bikers on your right that comes out of nowhere, you know, um, and there's a lot, right, a lot of things that kind of appear in the driving situation where you just don't understand or don't can't predict right and with augmented reality that can really help you have a third eye almost and another mm. kind of set of eyes that understands what's around you right for example you can see on the image right here that biker just came out of nowhere and with AR, it can tell you previously before it enters your frame right because the computer will know the association to the space and then it will warn you so you won't have a less chance to get into accident and you understand the spatial awareness and it can guide you with gps and tell you what to turn so a lot of these augmented reality stuff really gives um you know kind of a quality of life improvement to your driving right so uh, that- how what distance does it reach though because some of these motorcycles they go super fast and they just right. whiz right by you right and this is the power of um I mean, when we get to that place where right? i think this is mm-hmm. um we're not there yet so it's not going to be completely uniform but with autonomous driving every car will have a data set you know and know where each car is relative to each other so mm-hmm. we'll be talking prior to you know telling you right right so the thing about these kind of like technology where they link together they're a network and they understand how each other works so they'll be communicating each other before you even know nice. so that's why these kind of technologies ar will be super important because they're connected to each other yeah right nice. that's, that's, that's pretty cool that's a bigger topic which is the iot's right the internet right. of things exactly it's these big ecosystems where your thermostat <laughs> is going to talk to your alarm clock that's mm-hmm. going to talk to your iPhone or your uh, Alexa, and then turn on your lights and make you coffee as soon as you wake up at 5.30 right. a.m., right. right? Like these are all, that, that, and on your car, there's so many smart things now. Like if you look at uh, Teslas, right? They have 360 sensors, mm-hmm. right? So you, it's very aware of everything around it. And I think that's what Frank is talking right. about here. So augmented reality is just a way for the user to see another layer on top of everything here just yeah. to be safer. It's like everyone decisions. gets to be their own Iron Man, you know? You can that's have right. your own UI, you can have your own thing. You're, you're cool that's now, awesome. you know? It's really cool. It's a really cool time. Yeah. That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look at another uh, piece that you made. Talk us through this, Frank. Yeah, so this is kind of us trying to tackle a different part of augmented reality, using art to kind of communicate a deeper message here. So we, this is a, um, a festival we went, it's called the Future of Storytelling. It's like a technology uh, storytelling festival where companies come and show kind of like a way to use technology to tell interesting world stories, right? And one of the things that I'm passionate about is um, recycling, conservation, kind of these ocean related stuff because we're in Santa Monica and it's kind of partly huge in my life. And what we want to do is tell a story about what people talk about on Twitter. So this is a, actually a data visualization um, kind of like art piece about Twitter conversations. So what we're doing is pulling hashtags over time and then as you can see, there's like pieces of trash in there, right? So what happens is that over a hundred tweets, uh, as we collect over time, a piece of trash will drop. And the tweets are covering about like people kind of consuming. So sushi, coffee, and brunch. These are kind of like general, broad hmm. consumption um, things that we want to talk about. It's very mm-hmm. funny, but in a relatable way. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then the other side of this is people tweeting about recycling, conservation, and um, you know these kind of like positive stuff, right? And over time, this fish will kind of die out and get popular with trash mm. because so many people talk about consuming coffee and brunch and only like maybe a couple hundred so the ratio is usually five to one so it, it, we we always lose this kind of like trash game and we show this kind of um um progression over time in 20 minutes and the viewer can either sit there and enjoy or not right so it's kind of right. up to the individual and really tells speaks about what people care about people care if people care about this they'll engage you if they don't they don't but we also <laughs> learn a lot about like doing AR art installations right and wrong there were some things that we didn't do right the stands weren't really inviting and were really engaging <laughs> enough so there are a lot of things that we learned you know so it was a cool experience no this is really cool and I like um, if you could see in these photos here that the only thing that was there is this little piece of coral yeah. and the stand everything else was the augmented reality which was a layer on top of all of this which everything is tracked to which is fantastic 
So that's super cool. All right, so let's look. And mm. th I think this is a more recent development. I know you've been doing this for maybe the past year now, and it's been exciting. Uh, four months. Four, four months. months. Okay. Four months. <laughs> uh, I think you've just done a lot of work in this space in four months, right? So talk to us about Snapchat. Yeah. So I'm I'm sure a lot of you are uh, familiar with Snapchat, and um, but particularly this is Snapchat's new AR platform, Lens uh, Studio, and we are part part, part of their official Lens Creator program. Um, and you know, a lot of people are familiar with the doggy filters and stuff like that, but this is a software where you can really make your own content on snap. And one of the reasons that we're so, um, gun ho about this platform is because it's ubiquitous. Everyone knows snap. Anyone who's younger than 20 to 25 knows what that is, right? Even 30, I would say, and they will want to use that platform and it really gives people a tool to share their work without kind of like going through the loop of downloading a new app, which is. To a lot of you know users, they don't want to do that. The immediate the immediate reaction is say, "Oh, you have a download new app? No, I'm not doing that." Right? right. You're kind of fall short right there. So what Snapchat is really doing is allowing users to go on the platform, share the content, and build the audience. That's very important to a lot of creators. Yeah, and that what's super cool is it's free. Right? It's free, one hundred percent free. You could just download Snapchat Lens Studio, and you could just start making today. Yeah, and the best part is you do not need to know how to code. I repeat, you do not <laughs> need to know how to code. That's this is the part where we find the most um, positive thing about Snap is because they understand their their demographic. They're aiming for the creative industry, mm -hmm. and they're aiming for people who don't understand how to code but still want to make great AR experiences. I think this is um, the platform for any creators that you know don't want to code but also want to share their ideas and their designs and their animation. Right. Perfect for you. Yeah, I think there was a story I was watching on YouTube, or I believe it's one of these, uh, the the lens creators, where she didn't have any experience in this space at all. Precisely. Right? You know, like she barely knew how to do 3D or she was just learning because she Googled and YouTube a couple things, started modeling little characters and animations in there, and then brought it onto this platform. And now she has all these fantastic, all like tons and tons of downloads. And I believe she's one of the creators on here as well. Exactly. And uh, alternatively, I mean, if you're not a Snapchat person, because I'm not, <laughs> Facebook has their AR studio. Again, you could just sign up. It's free, and they have all of this very similar Same features thing. in there. But the only difference is that Lens Studio is available on Mac and PC, and mm -hmm. AR Studio is only on Mac. So for your PC <laughs> Android lords out there, you're out of luck. <laughs> good on the, oh, Good luck on the <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Facebook there's a question side. about that, yeah. too. Yeah. Derek asked that question. Yeah. Yep. What is yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so AR Studio, Mac only, and then Lens, uh, or sorry, Snapchat is both platforms. Right. So, Frank, I am sure a lot of people at this point they're wondering, yeah. how do we transfer our skills over to new tech? Because you and I, like we both came from the design and sure. animation space and we've Correct. been working together a long time yeah. doing that stuff. And you've made this full transition where you've decided to jump ship or just like, <laughs> Go all in on, on AR and VR, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You're like, I, I know when you first started, you're really into 3D animation. Right. And then at some point you're like, forget it. I'm, I'm, it's all, I'm all in, <laughs> I'm all in, baby. So, yeah. so how, do we, how do we transfer our skills? Um, you know, for us, when we first tried into AR VR, we're like, is it possible? Like, can we do this? You know, like we didn't know that it was possible to make full CG VR experiences because no one really told us, no one really told, like showed us the way. The, what we love about this is that there's no one telling you to do the right thing because mm -hmm. it's so new. And for artists like us, our skills in After Effects, Photoshop, and 3D trends over one to one. You do not have to learn anything new, save for Line Studio, right? You do not have to learn anything new. You can just take your current designs and animation in Photoshop, save it out, and plug it in, drag and drop, and bam, you have an AR experience, wow. right? Like a couple years ago, if I came, if I was on the show and I told you that, I would have said something different. I was like, I'm <laughs> like, dude, don't get into it. This is so hard, you know? But now we have tools and platforms that allow you to kind of just drag and drop. And for creators like us, where we like drag and drop, it's yeah. the best, you know? Right, right. So, for That's anyone huge. that wants to get into AR, VR, and be like, you're kind of scared of the coding side, the tech side, I understand. We were in the same boat, you know? Um, we didn't want to get into the technology side, so we're like, okay, what do we do, right? So what we started is taking our own ass, like skills in 3D animation and After Effects animation, and just render out 360 videos, because technically it's mm. still like VR, if you really want to like go right. in there, deck, right, like right. specifically, right? And just test your skills on t telling the story in that way. If you want to try AR, Lens Studio is your way, right? You don't have to learn um, Unity. You can just learn After Effects. You can take your animations, render them out, plug it into Lens Studio. Boom! You have a AR experience. Okay. And right, what again is Lens Studio? This that's it's a Snapchat a, stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's a Snapchat. So Lens Studio, Snapchat, AR Studio is Facebook. Got Very it. similar, but yeah. Right. And then the custom versions of that are AR Kit, 
by Apple, mm-hmm. which you can basically create your own app through there, right, and experiences right. through that. So that's their development platform, which is, is that free also? Yeah, so ARKit and AirCore both are free. The only thing is like if you want to, um, uh, for example, submit an app onto their store, then you have to pay the development fee, which is like a hundred bucks a year. I, I think that's what it is, but that's kind of the development fee to go to put on the store. Um, but ARK and AirCore both are available for you to download and for you to use. It's just a little more intense because you have to understand how to code and build an application. Right. So if you are uh, um, a 3D artist or an artist who knows coding, who want to develop applications, this is also great for you. ARK, AirCore, you can go in, dive in, uh, make your own stuff. Just a little more complicated. You know, you can't really um, show your work as easy. So this is another problem we had. We can't show our work with with, with other app applications. Either we right. have the phone on ourselves or bring a big v- VR headset <laughs> or we're not showing anything, right? But right, with, right. with Snapchat, it's like, boom, here you go. Yeah, it's right there. Right, right there. And to right. clients in meetings, that's like the best thing. You go in, boom, here you go. You, go, you want to try it on yourself? Here you go, right? It's so easy. Right. That brings up, like it makes the value of that content that much higher compared to like all the other stuff. Right. Yeah. So that's interesting. Uh, Mark, do we have any questions coming in from uh, YouTube right now? Yes, we do. We have one from Derek. He's asking, um, learning Unity or Unreal is pretty important in how to create a standalone experience. Do you think these technologies will quickly fade as things like ARKit and Lens Studio come out? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I don't think so, just because I think they, the the kind of like use is so different, right? Like Unity and Unreal, you're building like Fortnite, like mm, like huge like AAA large scale, uh, large scale game with multiplayer, with mm-hmm. like uh, back end, with support, with like huge things, right? With interaction, with uh, RPG, there's a lot of things involved, right? Mm-hmm. But Valen Studio is all about social media and making yourself look pretty and being cool. And so if I want to make a cool sticker to put on my face, so right, I'll just use Lens Studio. Right? So there's different face. applications, you know, like I think right. this social AR stuff is more for um, user, user-generated user content. It's more for people who want to make their own content, who want to be, you know, influencers, who want to go out there and share their face. But mm-hmm. I think you, you, like this Unity Unreal stuff would be more for like big activations in games. So it just have I two see. different. Yeah. So they I don't, don't think it'll purpose. Right. I don't right. think it'll fade. It'll carve out its own market as time goes on. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. So those big tools, I mean, those are for larger scale things. But what Frank is saying is that you could get into this today. If you know a little bit of like After Effects or a little bit of 3D, you could just drop your stuff. Even Photoshop. Even, you know, Photoshop. even Photoshop. That's fantastic. You know? So for those of you guys who are even trying to consider any of this stuff, just open Photoshop, make something, download uh, uh, Lens Studio, Blend Studio yep. and drop your stuff in. Right, because they have they, they built their um, software on templates. So basically, they have like a replace me section. All you have to do is replace. It's oh so easy, right? As a creator, you're like, wow. Because <laughs> you go to Unity, <laughs> you're like, cool. oh my god, what is this? This is like another world, right? Yeah, yeah. But then when you see like a sign, replace me, you're like, I get it. Yeah. You know, I get so how this is easy this. just to swap it exactly. out. Exactly, and that's okay. how they built for you, yeah. Right, no, that's fantastic. and. Maybe you can unpack this for us a little bit, Frank, about how do you think about this space, an actual space where you can interact with things versus a space that's linear, right? Like animation is yeah. linear, right? You watch it from beginning to end and it's a sequence. How do you think about these experiences where you could actually trigger and, and do actions sure. in there? Like what's what's it? Unpack some of that for us. I think the biggest difference for me is um, you allow the person who's experiencing to have their own story. The part about linear animation is that you're watching someone else's story. You're watching their perspective, their vision, and their um, kind of like creation, Mm -hmm. right? But for AR, VR experiences where there's interactivity, the user can choose their own story, can make their own story. And that's what's amazing because your story and my story in an experience is completely different and we can share that together and that creates conversation which a lot of linear stuff will not because then mm-hmm. it's like your opinion versus mine right when you're critiquing a movie it's like oh i like it i don't right it kind of ends over <laughs> there you have like different but, opinions right but it, with yeah. vr it's like there's so many things like oh did you see that i didn't see that because i didn't check out this exit you know there's some kind of like mm-hmm. crazy story that's between each users mm-hmm. compared to just linear stuff. So there's like yeah. that element of discovery in right. these different like, right. environments. And that's what world. humans like, this kind of like discovery on the world. Like, I'm a huge fan of exploratoriums where you go and just like touch stuff and yeah. try stuff because this is stuff that like very rare do we have nowadays, but VR can take that into a, a global, like universal level where it's like so many different worlds, mm-hmm. right? And that's what's cool. Right. And I wanted to say to that point, if any of you guys are in any metropolitan areas where they have really high-end museums, you'll start to see the experiences are changing very drastically there, where instead of it just being this giant uh, 
statue of dinosaur bones, it's like dinosaur bones with that overlay, that augmented reality over it or something projected on there exactly. where you could interact with it. You, the learning and the experience is so much more deep and rich. And it's the Wild West out there right now because there's right. only oh, yeah. a few companies <clears throat> who are doing this right now. Like one of them was my buddy, uh, JK, uh, Jonathan Kim. He's out in New York. He has a company called Rare Volume. He was an art director over at Royale doing some fantastic designs and animations. And after he, he maybe five years ago, he had the insight and he was like, you know what? This whole experience thing, it's, it's going to be a game changer. So he moved out to New York. He started learning about interactive, partnered with uh, developers. And now he has a company that focuses on just designing these experiences for spaces for like museums or retail experiences where the user is now interacting with things in, in very interesting ways, right? Like other practical examples of this would be you'll see some of these smart mirrors now, mm -hmm. right? Where you could go into retail and you could see different clothes on you in the mirror, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, those are some like interesting uses in, in retail, but this space is exploding. It's the wild, wild west. So for those of you guys who are just like, dang, you know what? I'm getting $5 for my logo right now. Take all of your smart skills and talent and apply that where it's highly valuable, where no one has explored yet because there's so much opportunities here that everyone can capture that and I, I think that's some place where maybe some people m just might not be looking yeah and I think one of the things that I want to add is like brands are looking for something new I think for a lot of you guys looking out there you're like oh logos and content and video content it's great it's kind of like the fundamentals of right now I think digital <laughs> is hitting to a point where we know what digital is but brands are looking for something that's exciting that's engaging and new I think AR and VR these kind of activation experiences are what they're looking for but also be, be wary of like pitching something too grand right understanding what you are <laughs> getting yourself into because like uh, it is one of those things where you might like go too far and not make it and not and, like don't deliver right like chris right. always says like over promise on or sorry uh under promise under promise over there. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost screwed up there <laughs> sorry chris i was screwed up but that's kind of what we is always the goal right you under promise right. over delivered experience that's amazing you know right, um right. and i think brands are looking for this they're looking for exciting ideas out there for people who are like have you know different thinking mm -hmm. so being be, be be risky and be willing to do stuff like that because right. I think it's going to pay off for a lot of you guys. Right. And I think the, the experience that we're talking about is something that's very useful and something that's going to enhance what we currently have because right. okay, you can make all of this flashy, cool-looking stuff with um, you know, putting these things out in VR space, but if there's no, you know, if you're not really solving a problem, uh, you know, where do we go with that? I saw this really cool right. app where if you're walking through an airport, there's an AR layer that directs you to your gate to get to your plane. And that's mm -hmm. super useful if... Mm -hmm. yeah, you're just trying to navigate. So I see Heck, those cases, yeah. the stuff that you're doing with navigation right. looks pretty awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of what we, I, what we feel like will take off in ER, VR. I think game and entertainment will be like the what people see first, like kind of the uh, pop pop media stuff. But mm -hmm. I think what really take off will be utility, utility yeah. uses. Because that's utility. what will really make everyone actually use the, app, the, the technology. Right. You know, because I think that, like Waze, Waze I think should be the first like want to figure out how to use AR in their thing. It'll be so cool. Like I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll actually really like that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I think to that point, I mean, just mapping it to uh, when the smartphones were first coming out, all right, back in 2007 when iPhone came out and, you know, you had things like the maps on there where before we were using Thomas Guides, we we're using MapQuest right. where you have to look up the address and then you have to print it out or write it down all the direction. You have to memorize that yeah, and you have yeah, to have yeah. a map as a guide. But now that you have navigation in your car but also more specifically on your smartphone you can't live without it mm -hmm. I, I feel like i can't find my place around anywhere yeah, if dude. you drop me in a city and say oh go to the ramen bar down there on <laughs> uh you know 14th and 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 uh maine i'll just be like i have no idea how to how to how to get there where's where's my phone you know what i mean like if For sure. you you have to use that so once we get to this point where you're solving really big practical problems with this technology, then I think we're going to have that fantastic mass adoption and we can't even live without it at that point. Exactly. Right. That's, that's where we want to get to is where we can't live without it. So I, I think that's, that's how you guys need to be thinking about this because we're definitely moving in that space and it's going to just get bigger and bigger and you want to be first. You don't want to be last. No, for sure. And I, I see someone asking about art installations. And I think that's where we also want to spend our time on is combining art and technology. Right. I think, uh, what we, as a paper triangles, we don't really want to focus on art only right mm -hmm. i think our blend is called like, uh, blending technology art and storytelling mm -hmm. um because we're in this uh moving to like a time and age where creative and technology is hand in hand you can't take that apart there's right, no right. way you can take like making something creative 
without technology, right? It's just mm -hmm. literally going to the other. I would say creating technology is the one. So as mm -hmm. an artist and as a creator, you have to understand what are the technologies out there to make yourself better, right? Right, and how to make it cool. And art is a huge part. Like sound installations, projections, mm -hmm. AR stuff, AR mapping, just, like even doing like a, like a Snapchat show would be crazy. But these are stuff like ideas that people have not even touched, have not even thought about, you know? Yeah. Right. And, and, and there's a lot of creators out there who like have these ideas that don't know or like is afraid of the coding aspect, which I am totally afraid of. Right, but right. once you get into it, you realize it's not really a big deal. Right. Yeah. Now, now for the people out there that really want to try to make this a part of their business, like how do they find clients that are looking for this work? I mean, is it a matter of, you know, going on job posting sites? Is oh it, yeah. That's yeah. actually a pretty interesting question. Um, <laughs> how do I answer this? <laughs> I mean, we, we got lucky because uh -huh. we were in the, in the beginning of VR where everyone's like, oh my God, I need a VR thing for my brand. Like I yeah. have to have one, right? And I think now it's kind of the part where like VR's hype is like, oh, is it really? But so now it's all about kind of like funding the right clients that has a problem. Like for example, we found mm -hmm. this client that has like a, a, a showroom that he has, but he doesn't want to make other showrooms for people to go see because it's expensive to rent real mm -hmm. estate. That's the real fact, okay. right? <laughs> but what we did is create a 360 showroom that allowed him to take that mobile Okay. to any client he wants Got it. but it's like a photo real um showroom of his all his assets and it's kind of like a game you can slide through you can click on the you can click on the specs you mm -hmm. can like so that is huge hugely just, um, helpful to small businesses okay. right but that mm -hmm. is right. a specific use case solving a specific problem uh -huh. right using vr i see right so it's very challenging but i think snapchat where stuff like that is hugely going to be beneficial because it's everyone like loves it brands really wants it right now mm -hmm. so i think a lot of people if you want to make a business i'll intro in in entry the ar that way like snapchat and instagram and then branch because okay. you can understand how things work that way yeah. so another aspect would be being able to troubleshoot it yeah. as well exactly because you like vr and ar has not has not been done by any other one but like currently so you have to understand that you're pushing boundaries and mm -hmm. if you don't know how to do something, if you run into problems, you know, just put your head down, try to solve it. <laughs> because to solve no it. one's going to help you because <laughs> no one knows, you know? I think that's yeah. the crazy thing because we're at a point where maybe the clients don't know what they need. Maybe the brands don't know exactly. what they need. So it's like, you know, you have the experience on the creative side right. where you can pitch, okay, here's what I've seen out there. And I could, you know, kind of identify the use cases mm -hmm. for this technology. Precisely, yeah. Um, someone here is talking about the medical field. And I think that's huge. Yeah. I just saw an app where, you know, you could scan over somebody's arm and you see the blood vessels going yeah. through their veins and that's a pretty cool way to learn uh mm -hmm. you know medical uh medical things yeah right? i think medical like uh, enterprise stuff like training will be a huge aspect um i know a lot of companies that reach out to are privately about like, um, sexual harassment training or workplace training where they want to basically take it to a more realistic level right not to scare you in a way where like you don't want to come back to work but educate you on what is like a real situation, right? Mm -hmm. Like a sexual harassment, a workplace, or like a gunman. In the, and that can be recreated in VR in a way where it's like, it teaches you, but won't right. scare you, right? That's and that's huge things that you can't do before, you know? <laughs> like it, before you you have to just have a pamphlet. This is what I was talking to the girl. She's like, I have a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> I sit there in a six hour course and I workshop you how to a sexual harassment, like kind of like situation. How, how can <laughs> you sit there boring, and just yeah. be like, oh my God, I can picture myself, you know? Like, but in a session with VR, it's so different. It's mm -hmm. immediate. You can know it it's like personal you feel it right, right? it's an emotion you're more engaged with exactly it, yeah. it's an mm -hmm. emotion you know mm -hmm. and then there's there's safety things too in terms of training right so if let's say if you are a uh, student in the chemical field and you're learning uh, about chemistry you could experience a whole lab experience of how things can mix together without even being in the face of danger right. at all right so that that's those are bigger things that can open up in the classroom and education and training so that's it's just crazy where we can go i can't even fathom how many things i'm sure if we sat down in a room today hours. we could just <laughs> jot down so many ideas for yeah. for hours and hours and hours and then of course the the big thing was we would have to go make it right because all mm -hmm. of the ideas are worthless unless you execute precisely, right? precisely. yeah so, you know, we're wrapping out our show here. Mark, is there any pressing questions that have come up in the feed that we should address here? Um, no other questions in the feed, but um, I think just something to maybe quickly touch on is like, okay, well, at this stage, like we've already talked about the fact that, you know, it's still early in development, but, you know, where are we in this timeline of development as VR. far as you see it? Yeah, VR, yeah VR. interesting. Um, I think well they, they they have this like I don't know what this graph called but it's this like hype cycle graph or something I don't mm -hmm. know what you call yeah. it, what the name is yeah. that, right and VR is like over the hype right I think right, right. same thing with Bitcoin is over the hype <laughs> and now we're, but now yeah. I think this is the real kind of like right 
um, point where people need to figure out what exactly are we using this medium for, right? It's definitely right. for here to stay. It's definitely the future. It's definitely an amazing medium. Like I've never shown anyone some VR and they're like, oh, I don't like it. It's always mm. like, dude, that was mind blowing, yeah. right? <laughs> but now how do you make that mind blowing something useful? Right. That's a challenge, right? And I think right. there's opportunity here. I think there's people who are doing the wrong things. I think we are doing the right thing. So I think there's so much room for people to inject their own ideas. Right now would be the perfect time as price boards are dropping, contents, um, you know, they need content. Mm-hmm. And um, platforms are making it easy for you to make. So it's the best time mm-hmm. to enter will be now. They need developers and artists. Exactly. And for artists and developers who like know one side or the other and don't know the spectrum, don't be afraid to go on forums and like Reddit or other stuff like Oculus and ask for help because there are yep. people like you who are coders who don't know anything about 3D that wants to make amazing software, amazing applications, but they just lack the 3D aspect. Mm-hmm. Go find them. They're out there. They're really right. out there. Vice versa for artists, right? If you need a coder, go find them, you know? Yeah. Like, now, like, I found a lot of my help on Reddit. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> like, on Reddit, on all these kind of places where they give help and they want to offer help, mm-hmm. you should try. It's, it's definitely going to, it's worth time. Yeah, and I want to add a layer to that because last year, like I was mentioning, I was working on a AR app with, with Frank. Well, actually, you know, I was consulting these guys who were starting their AR company. They had some amazing technology, and they were yeah. looking for storytellers. So they reached out to me, and, uh, you know, I was consulting them, showing different ways, uh, different thoughts of how we could tell the story. And I told them, hey, guys, I've never done this stuff before. I could probably help you. I could probably connect you to the right people. But I've never done this before. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. We're, we're hiring you because you, you, I like the way you think. I like the way you tell stories. And I like all the work you've done in the past. So uh, if we pay you money, can you go figure it out? Right. And I said, uh, sure. So first thing I did is I called up Frank. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, uh, how, how do we do this yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Right? And then uh, after Frank, like, I called up probably five other people who've worked in this space or have their hands in a little bit of something. And then I would check forums, I would Google it. And you know, we delivered all the stuff for that project. So that was, it was interesting. At the beginning of the project, I had no idea right. how to do it. I just Googled it and reached out to people exactly. and I figured it out. So the knowledge is out there. All, almost all of it is free. All of these platforms are free. Like there's no barriers right now. There's really no barriers. There's no know? barriers. So and another thing for me, it's like I want to add is like when we went to all these VR projects, I'm gonna say this: we really had no idea what we were doing. Like mm-hmm. it was just like we had an idea, like yeah. this would be cool. Can we do it? I don't know. <laughs> and then you right. just learn how you to just do learn it how, like that, that project you're talking about, that data thing that we did for the art show. Mm-hmm. That came together in three weeks, and we didn't know how to wow. do it. We did, we pitched it, knowing not knowing if it's possible, <laughs> and we pitched it and we did it. Right? That's kind of how That's it went. Awesome. You know, like it's because like you just kind of have to. Like, and this girl's asking about design in VR can be tricky. I don't think so because you're thinking designing as in like designing a frame. Mm. VR is just life. Right. If you know how to design for a person like yourself, that's mm-hmm. it. It's the same thing. Right? It's the same thing. It's not like designing for a frame or a client where you have to be like composition, color, whatever. It's yeah. different. I'm touching things. I'm experiencing. I'm spatially where it's completely different. Mm-hmm. It's more right? designing for the experience. The, the human. Like what right. Chris always thought. Yeah. Human centered design. It's for the human. It's for mm-hmm. you as a person. Right? It's not for the screen. So it's not really tricky. It's actually really interesting because you have to understand how a human works and what a human likes, right? When we do like AR stuff, interaction stuff, when we try to grab stuff, if there's no things to grab in real life, it's really awkward. <laughs> yeah, so how right. do you combat that, right? But that's right. not a design problem. It's more of like a human problem. Right. Right. So there's that, that's a great point. So I think there's plenty to learn here. Like all design is sol- solving problems. All you're doing is trying to figure out what you want to happen at the end of this. So you work your way back and reverse engineer that. And then you design an experience that's going to elicit that action, that emotion, whatever. So if, whether that's a 2D thing right. or that's an interactive thing, it's all the same. It's the same principle, same concept. So I want you guys to take all of these limiting beliefs about, I don't know how to code. I don't know how to use this technology. It's all there. Like what we've unpacked from you today is that it's all possible for you today to start learning and implementing 100 percent, yeah okay so I, i'd like to wrap the show on that i think this was a fantastic episode i want to say thank you so much frank for for jumping on because yeah, thanks for having me this was awesome thank yeah. you guys thank you yeah this was awesome yeah that's right <laughs> everybody up, guys. You. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So, as always, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Particularly, I want to know if any of you guys are doing any of this exper- uh, experiential stuff right now. Let us know in the comments section below if you're designing an AR and VR or something that we didn't even think about yet. So, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. And with that, we are wrapping out the show. Thank you 
so much, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.